Okay. So, good morning, ladies and uh, <laughs> good morning, gentlemen. Welcome to our second day at DEPCOM 5 in Helsinki. This morning, I have the pleasure to introduce to you Andreas Trille, mostly known for his work for custom Debian distributions. This time, he will tell you something about LaTeX Beamer and how to create nice presentations using this tool. So welcome and good morning. Yes, thank you. I think basically my task will be to keep you awake in the early morning and so I hope that this presentation which is not uh, so very important but nice, nice to have perhaps um, will solve this task to get you all the first hours of the day. Well, the reason why I thought uh, it a good idea to uh, make a talk about Latic Beamer is I'm uh, quite a stupid user by myself and I always need some people who just point me to some reasonable programs. And now I want to take over the role and point you to this Latic Beamer because I thought it is quite reasonable. I was formerly a um, quite happy user of Magic Point and at some point in time I have seen some, some drawbacks and I wanted to come over to these drawbacks and uh, somebody pointed me to Latic Beamer and so I will do the same now for today. Uh, please, the, the title is Appealing application uh, Presentations with Latic Beamer. This is what you see now, it's not really appealing but I just want to try to show you some, some features uh, which are possible but not always uh, the ones you should do for honest presentations. I have some um, examples prepared uh, which I want to show you for my own talks. One of them I will show you uh, today in the afternoon and well now let's start with the presentation. One nice feature of Nautic Beamer is it creates a table of contents for you and here you see what I want to tell you today um, why you might use Nautic Beamer and I want to give some reason and do a very short competition uh, uh, a very short overview of over the <coughs> competitions, competitions of Nautic Beamer but it is quite short, this overview, because I do not really know them exactly. And in the second part, I want to give you some tips. Um, I want to say, uh, give you some examples I have uh, used myself. I want to give you some tips for the viewers you can use. And uh, I want also do not hide the problems you will face. So, uh, the first thing is, um, what, what is the very good thing in LaTeX Beamer? Well, you can use LaTeX. If you are a comfortable LaTeX user, you will, very, will be very happy if you don't have to learn something new. You have a clear syntax, you have very good features, uh, you can concentrate of the content of the presentation and not the layout. This is very important if you have such such uh, <coughs> funny what you see is what you get uh, uh, presentation programs. I think you do not really see what you really want. And you just leave the layout to LaTeX, which, which is really fine and which is always the best idea you can have. Because with LaTeX, you just see what you mean. You mean you have a clear structure of your talk. You have a plan what to do your uh, uh, what to talk about, and you should implement your plan, and not any layout. You have intelligent computers to do this for you. And the good thing is the presentation will be always readable if you don't do some very dirty tricks. 
you can often see uh, people doing some tables or whatever with tiny or footnote size uh, um, text and you, you can't read it from the last row in the auditorium. So Latic Bimo makes quite sure that people will be able to read what you want to present. It's not uh, um, obviously at this slide perhaps because I try to do some funny things. You see on the left side the table of contents. We are currently here in the reason sections, but I think this is a nice feature to have this this line. I show you some some other forms of this, and I just choose one. I normally do not use in, in my presentation because I think it's on the right side is not the best thing, but just to show you what's, what's possible. And then you have this nice shiny uh, shadings here, the, the table of contents shades from dark to, to bright and the main text from bright to dark. So just playing around. I told you this is not really what you should do, but I'm showing some examples, by the way. Well, one more important thing is Latic Beamer works on any platform. This was uh, actually the, the reason why I switched to Latic Beamer, because when I wanted to have my um, Magic Point presentation on a, a Windows computer, which I was forced to, I would fail. And people wanted to, uh, to have a PDF export from my presentation, and I would also fail with Magic Point. And so <laughs> I was just looking for a, a text-based presentation program, and there were other styles like Prosper or HA Prosper, and I had some trouble with it and did not got what I wanted to uh, get. And so I asked on a tech mailing list, and they asked me, "Why don't you use Latic Beamer?" And I didn't find the answer <laughs> why I don't use it, so I started using it. So it works with any resolution. You sometimes have trouble and has to reconfigure your X for for different Beamer resolutions and so, but. Latic Beamer is based on a PDF file, and the PDF viewer can show you any uh, any file in any resolution, so you are fine on any hardware, and this is a very big advantage. The stuff you create is easily publishable on the web. Also here, Magic Point will, would fail. You have to do some tricks to convert it to something else, but with Latic Beamer you can just put your uh, presentation into the web as it is, or you compile it with a different style to make it readable in other formats, and so you are quite fine. And this is a very important point. Latic Beamer has one of the best manuals I've ever seen. Um, it has more than 100 uh, pages, and in principle, I could stop the talk here and tell you just read the fine manual and I would be ready because it's very well written and gives also some hints how to do presentations. Not only how to use the program, but some hints how you should give your talk a structure and whatever. And so read this fine manual and you will be very happy. Well, Contra, Latic Beamer, I don't know, I, I haven't found any points. So. Some funny features, you can make grids and shadings and whatever if you like in your presentation. Please do not use it very often. I just want to show you what you can do. Okay? So, what is Magic Point? Um, it has at first an unknown language. It is quite simple and you can learn it, but I think it is drawback. And it's hard to publish on the web. I've told you about this. And it has no logical markup. I tried something with defining some styles and whatever, and it worked more or less, but it's not really nice. The only thing I'm missing in uh, Latic Beamer is, you have this nice magic point feature that there was a, um, an arrow on the bottom of the screen on the last row, which pointed you to the point in time where you are. If you said magic point, my talk can last uh, 30 minutes, it's made you a uh, kind of progress bar. And this was a funny feature I'm, I'm missing now, but well, the advantages are obviously, and so I just left this problem. Then this kind of what you see is what you get, programs like OpenOffice Impress, K-Presenter, and whatever there are. Well, I have to admit, I'm personally too stupid to understand these programs. Mm -hmm. well, why I'm saying that? Well, 
they always hide the menu items in the wrong place. I never find the things I'm losing. I, I try to do some enumeration or, or itemize environment because I know it from LaTeX and I'm missing it and I'm always seeking for it and they come up with some styles I do not understand and if I want to uh, change something I'm just missing the, the right entry point, uh, menu, menu entry point and so well, it's, it's nothing for me. Maybe it's something for you then it's fine. I do not want to convince somebody to, to switch his favorite program but this is my point, but I do not use it. And what you see is not really what you mean. It is, you, you just think about something and how it should be layouted and then put it on some slides, but it's not the, the clear structure you mean and you have in mind for your presentation. So, as I said, you, you are missing the, the functions in the menu and the funny thing is you can mark some sections of your slides and move them around and they are placed in any position and they sometimes are not in the right place and uh, move around on the presentation uh, but you, you can't not stop them and so <coughs> I just don't understand it. It might be faster if you uh, try to so uh, draw some sketches. So uh, LaTeX Beamer uses um, some kind of, uh, you might know, P, uh, PS tricks from, from LaTeX and it has some um, comparable implementation how to do some sketches and drawings, it is called PGF and I will show you some examples which are in the beginning a little bit harder to learn but if you got comfortable with this style of making drawings by just giving coordinates and um, telling uh, LaTeX where to point arrows to, it becomes very easy to use and so it's um, a kind of um, starting hurdle you have to take and then um, using PGF is, from, from my opinion, easier than just moving images around with a mouse. So. I just want to tell you something about different styles you can use with LaTeX Beamer and for this purpose I just uh, try to point you to some presentations of mine and I now start the video recording. If it works it is fine and if not we try to go without it. I have some problems with my with my laptop here. I see only the, uh, the screen you are seeing as well. I have to be fast here in this place because I have to switch this off. So, this is a funny recording stuff and I hope it works. So, back to the presentation. I want to show you my talk. I will have uh, three times later. Well, this is kind of um, uh, source code of my presentation and the funny thing on the top is uh, if you use XPDF in full screen mode in my presentation, you have the remaining lines, the, the scroll bars and so are on the on the screen below. So I'm I'm switching around for the screens here. Maybe I see you see it here. Here was my presentation, and you are on this screen, and so, so you have this this line. Don't don't be uh, confused by by this. So uh, a presentation starts normally like this. You have a document class, so this, this beam was a little bit hard to see. I, I, my choice was to take a dark background to have the, the, uh, the code printed bright. And here you say, have also ways to define a, a theme. Uh, well, it is basically LaTeX Beamer comes with uh, some beams called after some cities where the talk was given and Schirke is a very small village near my hometown and I used it for this talk, I defined it myself and I'm just switching right into the talk show you some something I, I think which could be used, I am uh, used some table um, which is a little bit more advanced and I want also show you something like um, this, which I uh, uh, like very much. If you switch sections, you always get a uh, um, point in time of your presentation which refers to the uh, table of contents. This table of contents stuff is, is very nice. You have only put 
one line into your code and then you get always if you uh, into, uh, enter a new section or subsection this overview and the auditorium uh, becomes informed where you are. Also here I um, pointed you to this table of contents bar and here you can see the new switch. If I switch back you are here and now we are in this uh, place. So if people random people come into your talk in the middle of the talk they immediately know where you are and I like it this way. Uh, I hope you can see that the, the other points which are not active are grayed out here. I'm not sure if you can see it in the, in the last row. This is a, a nice thing to have. So, just back to the code. <coughs> so, uh, this is what I wanted to say. This was a more or less technical e example. I had in the technical example, for my opinion, I have this line. I have some some logo place on the um, on the slides, and you have the slide so-called frame title on top on the top bar. It's it's kind of a technical impression. So then you can kind uh, can have kind of moderate talk for not so technical interested people, which I do in my Debian Mate talk. Let's see where in which, yes, this is a place. I just used a, a different uh, theme. It is called Wernigerode. This is a city I'm, I'm living in, and it is, looks completely different. Uh, I have here um, not the, the um, table of contents bar on every slide because it's not so important for this purpose. Instead, I have some uh, foot line with the title of the talk, the um, the slides, the, the current slide number, and if I switch forward, you can see some funny slides. And so people also know uh, when to wake up. If you reach the slide 19 or 20, you should wake up to, to don't, don't miss the next talk. And so this is uh, a different uh, kind of talk. And you can just switch the layout by just changing one line, uh, just change the theme of your talk and you are ready. So, this was a moderate talk. And you can uh, uh, do some kind of entertaining talk. I used it for the Linux talk. talk. I tried to make a presentation for well, newbies, free software newbies, we, which should be attracted by well, more or less funny stuff. And so I uh, chose the funny title, knowledge, knowledge, Power and Free Beer, and the layout was more or less like this. I put it, uh, a beer symbol on, on the top and well, made some funny images. And now here you come to some other advanced features of the LaTeX Beamer style, because um, you can uh, have image masks um, this image uh, would uh, look fine also on a, on a blue background or whatever because everything which is white here is, is just masked. And here you have to be careful Then, we, uh, if we come to, to different um, presentation programs, it doesn't work in everything, in every presentation program. I will come back to this talk later on. Where are I? Okay, yeah. Well, I uh, learned to use um, or to reuse some slides of the talks, and so I found it very, uh, uh, very nice to to use uh, some scripts. I'm Ruth all the time. I'm, I have put it a link behind this uh, um, uh, example scripts, and there you find my very very simple. And uh, you should not look at it, but it just worked. The script uh, moves. Uh, or compiles the, the text file into a, a presentation like this, and then I have another script. It is called Beamer Handout, which makes uh, handouts because it's a little bit boring if you print every page uh, on the printer where just a single item uh, is added. This makes no sense, and this is suppressed in the handout script. So that's why I use uh, additional script for this, and it is very. 
good, a very good idea if you have uh, some kind of input directory for your private styles, themes, and I also have some uh, slides which are common between different talks. I put them in this input directory and I just include these uh, this, uh, slides that is uh, very easy to use and I would suggest to do it like this. And also I have an image directory because I'm reusing some images for different talks. So this is the main idea, just don't copy anything in your talks, just uh, input and reuse the stuff. Now, now for the viewers, well, many people uh, try to use GPDF or KPDF depending from their preferred uh, um, graphical user interface. Um, I had problems with both of them. They are not properly using full screen mode or they switch to full screen mode but scale the, the slides not well. So. I did not fiddle around very much with them. Perhaps some of you know how to avoid the problems. I would advise you to use XPDF with a minus full screen option. It's minus full screen option. Uh, just do what I showed you before. It makes the presentation full screen and the sliders and what, whatever are outside. If I switch to the, to the uh, workspace to the right, you can see here this this bar for uh, for the, yeah, on the on this place this bar from from the sliders okay <coughs> um, what not works in XPDF are animations you can do some animations to to, to get some uh, um, text moving uh, inside the presentation or crispy uh, shining up uh, I think this is not a, a disadvantage because using animations very much is, is not a good style, it's just showing off what nice features your presentation program has and so I would not advise to use this, but sometimes you need animations. For instance, I have an animation in, in one of my talks I want to show you in this Freebird talk. Here, you need an animation. This, this progress bar to demonstrate the uh, uh, the, the problem of the patterns and this only works in Acrobat Reader 7. I'm sorry it's non free but it works not in, in other viewers. You, you should be aware that this might be a problem. The code for this animation is also somewhere well, no, it's, here's the code for the presentation um, and now we come also to a little introduction into PGF um, you can set <coughs> colors and rectangles and what you want to do. You, you can check the code in the manual and it's easy to understand. Here's just an example if you want to have a look at it. It is all uh, everything in the web. And the interesting thing here is um, visible at slide 3 is the third uh, part of the progress bar and visible on slide 4. This is a, the uh, syntax how to use animations. And this is an interesting thing, but as I said, it works only in Acrobat Reader. So, no animations for XPDF. You have no image mask. I, um, uh, I showed you the image of this uh, fish dealer from Asterix and Obelix, and it will only work also with Acrobat Reader, because if you have some, some different than a white background, it would look ugly in XPDF, or in the GPDF and KPDF, it's no difference. Sometimes you are missing fonts with XPDF. If your box is not really good installed, then it might look a little bit ugly. And you have some shading problems. Um, well, the intention of... What? Of this slide was you have a shading from in the basic layer from bright to dark in blue and the code is written so that this bar in the bottom and on the top is a shading from right to left and this shading is, is only possi possible in Acrobat 5, Acrobat 7 has the same bug as XPDF so you have to find out <laughs> what's, what's the best thing it's not important so you see but 
if you want to use all features, you are sometimes bound to some viewers. Well, uh, feel free to file bug reports against XPDF. We have the source. We haven't in Acrobat either. We can't fix their stupid bugs. So, Acrobat 7 is, <coughs> believe it or not, uh, a non-free software which I use mostly because it is most feature complete for Acrobat, uh, for, for the uh, Latex Beamer. If you are advocating only free software, just go for XPDF and cope with the drawbacks I mentioned above. But it has also some problems, the shading problem I showed you. Acrobat 5 has not this shading problem, but it has problems with transitions. So you find drawbacks for every uh, viewer. You just should know them and you will be fine. Well, regarding images, um, well, as I said, it's a little bit different, a little bit um, more hard to uh, work with them in this uh, what you see is what you get pres uh, presentations and you have to uh, know that you have get transparency only if you have an image mask and uh, the first time I, I had to struggle two days with an image mask I created with GIMP GIMP is fine, you can say well this is a grayscale image, so do, do anything but um, and the first uh, point I tried, Gimp, it, uh, uh, GIMP created a file type which was gray minus something, I do not remember, and this did not work. And so I found out, out after two days that I have to convert this image which was exported by GIMP with convert and convert is it back. And then you get this 8-bit grayscale. And this is exactly what you want and exactly what, what works. So if you come to the point in the manual where it talks about image masks, make sure that if you say file, my mask, whatever, that this 8-bit grayscale comes up and not something else. It is uh, hard to find out if you don't know it. So another problem in the talk is um, that you can point and click to these so these things, if I point to examples, I'm not really in the example slides because the example slide is a little bit later here. And so it doesn't point to the right slide. Yeah, it's also uh, the wrong slide. And the problem is, it seems to pro uh, be a problem with the Debian TTEC package. There's a bug report. Uh, this links point to the relevant bug report. The first one is the bug report and the second one is the reason which are gi is given in the Latish Beamer list. If other people who are not using Debian compile this, this file, this works. And the, the reason is that there are some, some styles are different and there are uh, 10 different or whatever. I, I was not able to, to verify. And people told me with the TTEC 3 packages in experimental it would work, but it didn't work for me. So be aware of this problem. It is no real problem if you don't want to, to switch forth and back in your presentation using this one. But if you want to do it, you must know it uh, will not work. Please tell me if somebody would find a solution for this problem. I would be happy if I would know it. So, And then my advice is make a nice slide for discussion time. Well, I take mostly a picture of my own and put the link uh, to the talks on it. So if you if you want to have this presentation, you can get get just to my talks page, or you do not even know to uh, to write down this link. Just Google for Andreas Tille presentation or talks or whatever, and you you have a, a nice table where you can um, see all my talks, including this one. So if you have questions, I, I can answer this question or I can show some other things, how I uh, use some images or whatever. So it's you, for you to decide. We have just a birth of a fees and not a real talk. So just ask me or tell me what I should show you. <coughs> yeah. I think the, <coughs> the lack of animations in, the, in any of those packages is a very, very positive thing. Yeah, because, yeah. Because marketing people tend to abuse yeah. And then 
you go sometimes to, to a presentation yeah. and you're just yeah. looking at the presentation and not listening to the person that is talking and, and explaining what, what you have to mm -hmm. read there. So it's not a... It's it not is a not a real picture. drawback. It's, I, I, I think you should, very, very, you should be very, very sparse with animations, but sometimes you need them. For instance, with this, this, this uh, progress bar, if you want to show this, you have to either call it an, an external program or whatever, but uh, there are some uh, few reasons which, are, which is nice to have. So, But don't uh, let the text fly into the slide or whatever, I think this is stupid and it's not very good style. Any more questions? Is it possible to include audio in the... Uh, yes, it is. Just Please repeat the question. Is it, it is possible to include audio in the presentation? Yes, it is. I would uh, like you to read the manual because I, I, I can't say it on my own. I don't know, but you can call external programs and then you can call an external audio playing program and it will work. It is described in, in, in the manual. Yes, ne next question. Uh, will math mode formulas be scaled correctly? Yes. It is. You can do everything you want to know. You had uh, to uh, be aware that uh, yes, uh, the space which is available not not so uh, uh, large as it is on on a sheet of paper, but you will see it. And everything you can do in Tech is possible here. You can even use uh, PS tricks, but it is not suggested to use PS tricks because this PGF works better with LaTeX Beamer. And so. If it is not necessary, but in most cases it is not, and then you can do everything you want. Yes? Uh, you know, you were saying that you can uh, execute external programs. Can you get X programs to come up in your presentation? Like yes, you yes, you can. You can do some XAs or whatever. I, I sometimes like to, to, to uh, uh, I want to repeat the question. The question was can you bring up external X applications and so uh, for instance, I use sometimes XIs to to make people aware where I'm, where I'm moving the mouse around, and this is very funny. And because the people, the Windows people, do not know XIs, and they are very very happy if they see them. So <laughs> it's a nice <laughs> idea <laughs> to get them following the mouse pointer. Any further question? So I I just su suggest to to move forward to one of my talks with which contains uh, some little images. Here, this was the, the, the example for the animation. I'll, I'll show it again. <coughs> so, if I go to this slide, it's, it just works. And this is a reasonable example for an um, animation. And now I try to find, here's the effect that you can't point to the right place, but no problem. I try to explain newbies what is a Linux distribution and um, they always ask me, well, you told me Linux would be free of charge, but if I go to the, to the software store, I have to pay money, there's no difference to Windows. And so to explain to these people what they are charged for. So, and I try to explain, well, this is a happy user who just bought a new computer. And here, Fred, well, I can get an operating system for free, downloads it from the web and installs it on the computer. It's fine. And you need a graphical user interface. With Windows, it is included here, you need it extra, okay? The user installs it on the computer. Then he needs a web browser and an email program. And you see on his uh, smile, it is not so happy as before because it needs a new user at least one day to do this stuff. And one day uh, earning no money but just installing a computer, it costs money. Then he wants to have a, a nice office program and he goes to the internet, installs it on his computer. Then perhaps some people might use some good quality typesetting program and so goes to the internet, installs on the computer. And if the user wants to have an image manipulation program, he can go to the internet and install it. And to see his smile um, uh, changed into a not so happy user because hmm, it took me two days to come to this place. And if the user proceeds and wants to have a uh, web server or 
um, database server. So the user says, what the fuck is it? I, I spent three, time, uh, three days to install my computer. I have not pay, uh, to pay any money, but I lost the money I would earn in three days. So the alternative is, and this is now the, um, the style you can use PGF, you can just reuse all these arrows pointing around and uh, tell them to point to a new place, not to the computer as on the slide before, but just put it to a different place. And this is kind of fun and you would have, uh, uh, would need a certain time to do it with your, your um, uh, what you see is what you get program. At least me would use a certain time. So the, the, re the sense is just pay for this three days of working time and install a distribution on your computer. So the user is happy and for this happiness he has to pay some money and this explains people well, this is the reason why I have to pay for Windows and pay for the service, not for the code. And people learned it. And if you have some time I also show you how it works in Debian. Debian is replacing this, this box you have to pay for. But here's a little bit different. We have for, uh, we can put Debian for free on the computer. And the funny thing is we have co no company which builds this distribution, but we have single, single people. For every program, a, a certain maintainer is uh, responsible and they do it for free because they do it for their own, for their own purpose and not to get money. So you can uh, explain what Debian is. <laughs> You can explain what you are doing yourself, it's quite easy. And I, this is a special slide, I will, do not want to explain, I explained Debian. And well, here is, um, I forgot, there is an additional bug in um, Acrobat Reader because if you are using a, a mask, an image mask, as I did uh, on the uh, beer above, then the, the this, uh, color of the uh, pictures you include is changing. So, this is very uh, uh, colorful, but the original image isn't so colorful. So be aware of this effect and uh, leave out the image mask if you want to avoid it. This is a further hint or trick. And my last slide is how to explain custom Debian distributions. Oh, sorry. If a new user comes to install Debian, he finds 15,000 packages of a new user we would have to read 15,000 package descriptions. He would need more than three days to understand, or he wouldn't even understand what this description means. And so this user would not be happy if he installed Debian. And so we could give the user some helping hand, because if the user is a schoolboy, we just have a, 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 a method to concentrate on the very important thing. He has just got some kind of uh, class which just focus him on Scholar Linux or if the user is some, some medical expert you can have this focus on Debian made on the confusion, the initial confusion on the Debian package pool is solved by this custom Debian distributions and this is what how I try to explain my colleagues what I'm doing in my spare time. So, well this is possible with Slatic Beamer, feel free to to have a look at the code and ask me if you have any questions. So there do not seem to be any more questions. Actually, yeah, there is one. Um, I just I just tried to find the code uh, um, on your website. It's yeah. a link, is it? Yes, I I have a, a talks page, and 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 every every talk is is linked to in a table. And I have on, on, on the left menu frame uh, a hint how, I, how you can get the code. It's not very comfortable, I admit, but uh, if you have problems, just send me an email and I will show you how to, how to find it. It's not so, but most users uh, do not really care about the code, and so I did not make uh, much effort to, to make it very easy available, but all, everything is there. Okay. So I think I could, can start the rec uh, stop the recording and hope that the final.